Okay, so I'm going to um, just go over how to get your Google Maps or your Google API set up. And so when you create a new um, area map, uh, you can give it a title or whatever. Um, and uh, you're going to need a key for your Google API before this thing will work. So what you can do is uh, there's a link here into your Google API key and I'm going to go to a new tab. I'm already logged in. It might prompt you to log in or something. It, it might prompt you to create a project. Go ahead and just kind of go through the steps that they present you with. But once you create your project, um, you'll want to go to, um, you might already have a key, uh, two things. One is services. Uh, there's a, here's all Google provides a ton of different things you can uh, hook into. Um, what you want to do is turn on, make sure that the Google Maps API version three is on or active. You see that there is a 25,000 requests per day, um, which is a lot of requests. Uh, probably not a problem uh, as far as limits. And in fact, if you have a restaurant that's really popular or whatever, maybe you're getting a lot of customers you could always set up another Google account for them to keep them separate and just use their key but um, uh, so 25,000 is plenty for one or quite, quite a few uh, locations actually uh, so make sure it's turned on and then when that's on go to then your uh, API access link over here and you'll get this uh, key uh, so you'll copy and paste that uh, into into this form. So when I do that, I hit that and I hit publish. It will then bring up a default map, and this is kind of the default for Google. I guess this is Google's area or something like that, but um, it's the place of default. So when you create a new map, go ahead and just type in. You can type in a zip code, an address, whatever. Uh, if I want to go to downtown Colorado Springs, I can just type the zip code there. Uh, you can just type in a city name. I can type in Denver, and then it's going to take me right to Denver. You know, so any it can be a specific or pretty general as well. So, um, and then this is where you or the client would define the map. So you can click on these things, move them around. Uh, you can click to add additional. Um, points for the map. Once in a while the points will get, you might click over here, but it kind of inserts it in between. It's kind of unpredictable sometimes, depending on, see like that one. But um, in general, if you stay pretty close between the other uh, pins, it usually works fairly well. Uh, if you want to get rid of a pin, just click on it and it'll go, it'll go away. So you can they could define just kind of a square area. They could draw drag these things all over the place. Then of course you set your zoom level. You might need to make it a little smaller in you know in this view because when you put it on the website maybe it's a little smaller and you want to be able to see the whole thing. You just set center the map and zoom uh, to whatever level you like. And of course you can change the color um, and then select your other options down here for success and fail and uh, when checking the um, the address if you're going to use that feature. Make sure after you type in a URL you need to actually turn it on. This is a convenient way that if you do want to turn the redirects off but you don't want to erase or have to erase the URL because maybe you want to turn it back on. Just turn things on and off here. And uh, that's about it. So once you do that grab your, uh, again if it's on the same website copy the uh, the short code here is probably the easiest way if it's on another website it could be another WordPress site if it's not the same website that this actual plugin is running on then you need to use uh, this code here so when you copy this so if I copy that and um, let's just bring up a page well, I can't do it here let me look bring up um, Let's go into pages and let's go to the about the one I've been or the sample page. This happens to be the same website, but um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna 
Now when you do this, make sure you're in HTML mode. If, I, if you plug it into visual, if you, type, if you paste it in here, it's going to totally change all the... So if I take, paste it here, it looks right, but when you go into HTML, it gets translated into something totally different and it's not going to work. So, so you need to go into the raw HTML source and put it in here. Uh, if they already have, and you know that they do already have um, jQuery installed, you could eliminate this line. This is the what pulls in jQuery, uh, which is required to run this. One of the things. Um, so you could delete that. I, I found that in most cases it is okay to leave it, but if you have some, un, you know, if you get errors or, or something uh, un, unpredictable behavior or something like that, you can probably just delete this line um, again they have to have jQuery installed otherwise but uh, and then here is the uh, the script is actually the Google Maps uh, JavaScript code and then this script is pulling from your website so um, and then once you plug that in um, update it and you're good to go so that's it thanks